Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel with this beautiful sunlight outside. Today we're going to check out Automator plugin for Figma, which is going to change the way you use Figma. You can add your own features to Figma. You can create your own shortcut. You can simplify tasks which would take hours before. Remember that viral clip where somebody was typing in instructions and the UI design was automatically being created? This is that very plugin, which the company has finally launched and released for everyone to use. I'll be showing you all the amazing automations you can do, all the awesome shortcuts you can create, as well as towards the end, I'll be showing you how you can start creating your own automations. Very simple steps, very easy to do. Once you get a hang of it, you'll be able to become a Figma power user, which everybody wants to be. So without further ado, let's just get started with the video. All right, so let's look at some amazing examples. The first one is by Niels Oosterhof. And of course, they've done it for their own company. But as you can see, they've convert their iOS designs to Android designs in one click. Yes, that is all that was needed. This can be activated with some key keyboard shortcuts as well to make it even faster. But look at how quickly it happens. As you can see, it instantly converts the switch into an Android switch. It converts the text into a Roboto. It converts, again, no code was used in the creation of this. Now, this next one is by the company itself. It's basically showing how you can automate creations of artifacts, things like backgrounds, gradients, color palettes, etc. Jordan Singer, who's one of the people behind this plugin, created his own automation where he cleaned all the elements into this incredible showcase of a design system. I'm sure you've seen this with material design. I'm sure you've seen this with other design systems where everything is organized in different artboards. And as you can see, he's done it with a single automation. He didn't have to click too much. He didn't have to code anything. It was done with an automation. Of course, recently they announced that Automator works perfectly with a tool like Airtable. Airtable, as you guys know, is used to store large amounts of data for company use, for databases. You can now pull information, images, etc. from that table and then push it onto Figma. As you can see, he's created like a multiple grid of different elements that were on the table and used Automator to kind of give them a nice user interface as well. Yes, that can also be done with Automator. Now, that's not it. If you're creating, say, a design system or you've created a set of slides on Figma, a lot of people do that. How about we organize it with a table of contents? Automator can also allow you to create a table of contents for a set of artboards. So based on the name of the artboards or the position of those artboards, it will create a table of content with links in it. Yes, so you can even add links to a certain text. So if you click on that text, it will take you to a certain screen. Again, done in one click and you can do it multiple times for any set of artboards. In fact, on their official website, they have this little example where they select all the elements and it automatically gets converted to placeholders. So if your developer asks you for a placeholder design, you can you can say, it'll take me one second, literally, and it just converts everything into this gray bubbles or gray text right here. It's pretty, pretty awesome. It's almost as if it's magic, but it's not. It's just simple automations created in Figma. This plugin has actually received a thumbs up from Figma itself on Twitter. They say this plugin gives you a no code interface to the Figma API to further customize and speed up your workflow. I think this is an incredible, incredible tool in itself. Now for the next segment of the video, I want to show you Automator plugin. Of course, you can get this from the Figma community, install it and start using it now. Now, the first thing that you'll see is a community tab on top. If I click on community tab, it'll give me a bunch of already created automations by the Automator team. I wish they start adding more customizations or more automations to this community tab here itself. Now I'm going to use this little UI kit right here to kind of demonstrate some of these really cool features. Now, for example, I want to make this little artboard or this little frame into an isometric frame. I can either install a separate plugin, do it separately. It has some settings here and there, but instead I can just click on make isometric and it automatically creates an isometric uh, frame for you guys here. Now that was just a simple example of how an automation really looks like and how it works. Now, if I want to say scale an artboard by a certain number, they have something called scale by number. I say scale by number and I say, hey, so if I click on this, it gives me a certain pop-up right here. It gives me a certain model view right here and I just add the amount. So if I want the screen to be double of this, I can say, okay, done, scale it by two. So now it's double of this original screen and everything inside this 
has been scaled up, which is really cool. Or maybe I just want to select all the text on the screen so, because I want to change the color of the text. So I can say select all text and it will select all the text. In fact, it will select all text all across all your artboards. As you can see, every piece of text has been selected. In fact, one of my favorite community automations is Time Machine. Now, if you're like me and you want to visually see the history of say, a uh, artboard, that I just click on this artboard here and say Time Machine. What it does, it creates a Time Machine page where it saves everything that I saved. Of course, I've saved this before this, but as you can see, it saved the older version of this artboard and it's named it as well as given it a time here, as you can see on the left, which is really cool because it shows you when it was edited at exactly what time with even the seconds, which is really, really accurate. Now this plugin works both for FigJam as well as Figma design, which I think is really useful. However, one thing that everyone was going crazy for was the integration with the default search feature of Figma. So if I say control P or command P, as you can see, if I select if, if I search for automator and then I say tab on the keyboard, it will give me all of these. So I can then just randomly select which one I want. And of course I can edit it inside the screens. So I think that is super useful to be able to automatically get into automator. You can see what you used last, so you can use it multiple times. In fact, I went ahead and created my own little feature. So for example, you have this little button here. If I click on button, and I say, what button type is this? And I say rounded. What it will do is it will create a completely rounded button with a purple hint because I love purple. And it also adds this really nice shadow. Hey, I need to pat myself on the back because I think this little automation is really cool. Now, hey, Puneet, you created this. How do you share it with a team member or with even my YouTube audience? Well, if I click on this little settings icon on the right, and I go to this little edit button on the top right, it will show me something called export as GIS. Once that is done, if somebody wants to import it, you can just go to settings. From here, you can say import from JSON. Of course, they also have a Discord, which I think is really cool. So you can really collaborate with the community, see what other cool stuff the community is creating as well. Now for this segment of the video, I'm gonna show you how to create your own automation really quick. So I'll be taking this button automation as an example, and I'll show you how I did it by recreating it. So if I click on new automation, it will allow me to create a new automation. Of course, I can change the name if I click on edit or I'll just say um, ghost button. Yeah, that, that's a nice name. So it converts any button into a ghost button. Of course, I can even give it its own custom colors. In the future, hopefully the creators will add say custom icons, etc., so that I can identify my automations better. For now, maybe I'll use the blue color here. And of course, everything else can be changed as well. However, I want to add an action here. So to add an action, I will click here, this endless list of actions. So basically I can change anything or do whatever I like. So for example, in this case, I would have to get the element first. So I'll have to pick this button up. I'll search for get. And as you can see, get current selection. So whatever I've selected on screen, it will affect that. Again, developers will have a lot of fun because there's a lot of if else statements here as well. So for the next step, I want to change the color of the button. So the button color in this case. So to add that, I'm going to add another action and I'm going to change this to fill. I'm going to search for fill. And as you can see, there are remove fills and add fills. Of course, as you guys know, a ghost button is generally white or gray, and it has either no background or it's gray in color. So in this case, I'm going to add a fill and I'm going to drag the fill inside get current selection. So add fill and the add fill you can change from here as a gray. I want it to CCC, CCC. <laughs> as you can see, this is now a gray color here. I can choose whatever value you like. A uh, lighter gray will also do. I even want to get the text. So maybe the text color should be like a black or a light gray. So I want to add this and I'm going to say find. Find allows me to find a certain element on screen. Again, this, as you can see, this automator does have a slight, once you've experimented and practiced a little bit, you'll be an expert like me. <laughs> find all, or you can say find the children. In this case, maybe the children will go. In the current page or parent action, you can select type here and condition is, is or is not, whichever condition you want, more than, less than, whatever. But in this case, it's type is text. And under the type is text, we want another child action, which will be set color, which will be, 
which as you guys have seen earlier is fill now the fill i wanted to be the fill i wanted to be a darker gray which is c c c c c c you found the text you've added a fill to the text as well you've added a color to the button as well and of course if you want you can change the current selection to like a rounded so in this case you can just say radius so set corner radius and it place it inside get current selection and set corner radius to i don't know 500 1000 whatever you like this will just make it completely rounded now to test this little ghost button out that we've created i'm going to click on this button right here and i'm going to say ghost button ah and as you can see it's grayed out the text it's also grayed out the background as well as added a border radius to it i think this is fantastic now as you can see we've tried out making our own ghost button automation and we can use this to make whatever i be like in fact i am working on something called repeat grid which i might submit to the discord allows you to have the whole repeat grid uh, automation that you have in adobe xd but on figma i'm going to show a little image on screen which will show you all the automations you can pause and see what there are and you can come back to this little screen if you like and thanks again to jordan for this little screen right here i hope you have a great time with this plugin and i hope you supercharge your figma designs for sure i'll see you every monday and thursday same time same place until next time take care of yourself and god bless